thank you so much for joining us. We'll give it another minute for people to trickle in. Give it another maybe 10 seconds. All right, just about ready to get started. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Q&A session for Paintbox 2022. We're gonna get started right now. If you would like to access closed captioning, you can click on the CC icon located in the toolbar. As a reminder, the session will be recorded. First, we're going to start with introductions, and then I'll pass it over to Sarah to tell you more about the work that the public art team does. My name is Amber Torres, public art project manager, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. Hi everybody, my name is Christina McGeehan. I use she, her pronouns and I'm the communications director for the Office of Arts and Culture. And I'm Sarah Rodrigo, the senior public art project manager in the mayor's office of arts and culture as well. Um, and thanks Amber for having us all here today. So just a real quick background on our office and public art. The city of Boston has done a lot of work related to public art for the past decade including updating our public art policies and procedures, redefining our understanding of what public art is and could be, and examining the gaps in the city's public art landscape. In the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture, we've commissioned artists to create many new public art projects in the last several years, and there are more projects in the pipeline. Um, really quickly, on the screen, you're looking at Together by Mizikar at the Engagement Center in Newmarket. And that's the top left. Top Center, Width and Web by Matthew Hinsman at the JP branch of the Boston Public Library and Curtis Hall BCYF campus in Jamaica Plain. R-O-X-B-U-R-Y by Joe Wardwell with Nakia Hill and the 826 Boston Y Lab writers at the Roxbury branch of the Boston Public Library in Nubian Square. Love Thyself by Marka27 in Grove Hall in Dorchester. That's lower right. Crisscross Signal Spire by Nijin Yoon in Nubian Square in Roxbury outside the bowling building. And that's the center, bottom center um, image. And You Are Loved by Alex Cook at the Engagement Center in Newmarket. All of these pieces have been commissioned in the last seven or eight years. Um, and that brings us on to Paintbox. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sarah, for that introduction to the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture and the public art team. Our plans for today are to go over the call to artists for Paintbox and the submittable application, and then open it up for questions. We'll do our best to answer your questions today, but if we can't, we'll take note of your question and post the answers under the Frequently Asked Questions section of our website next Wednesday, May 18th. Feel free to post questions in the Q&A form through Zoom and we'll answer as we go along, sorry, as we go along and we'll answer them at the end of the presentation. Next slide, please. The first page of the call contains basic information such as the budget, eligibility requirements and important upcoming dates. For example, the deadline to apply, which is Friday, May 27th at 5 p.m. And my contact information at the bottom, amber.torres at boston.gov. One thing I will note is that while we will accept applications up until the deadline, we strongly encourage artists to apply before 5 p.m. to avoid overwhelming submittable. So please prepare ahead. This call is open to artists over the age of 18 that live, work, or organize in Boston. We are especially interested in artists who are new to Paintbox.
Pages four and five contain information about the program history and the project award. So when Paintbox was launched in 2008, the goals of the program were simply to beautify Boston and to introduce residents to the artists that live among them. However, as the city invests more in public art, Paintbox has also become a great opportunity for artists looking to gain more public art experience. Artists will receive a $500 stipend for their projects. They'll receive $200 after their application is approved to cover the cost of supplies and $300 upon completion of the box. Artists will be required to register as vendors with the city of Boston or provide an existing vendor ID number and pick up an official paint box badge after receiving their acceptance letter via email. In a few minutes, we'll go over the instructions on how to register as a vendor. At the bottom of the page, you'll see that in order to receive final payment, artists must submit the following uh, things. A photo of the electric utility meter number, if visible, photos of the completed paint box, and a payment request form for the remaining $300. Most of our public art projects are neighborhood specific, but Paintbox is a citywide program. We aim to work with every neighborhood essentially. Last year, we commissioned 83 utility boxes in 13 neighborhoods across the city. You can see the map here on the screen and it's also visible on our website. Page seven shown on the left here outlines the project schedule and the commissioning process. Right now, we're in step one. The call is open and we're answering questions. For the next step, the call closes. And that will be on Friday, May 27th at 5 p.m., just to reiterate. Once the call closes, step three begins. A working group will review submissions and select finalists. The Boston Art Commission, also known as the BAC, will review and have the final vote on all proposed paint box designs. Next step is the commissioning process. Selected artists must pick up official paint box badges from City Hall and make sure to register as vendors with the City of Boston in order to receive a stipend. On the right here are some screenshots from our website on how to register as a vendor. You'll wanna visit boston.gov backslash procurement Scroll down to where it says supplier portal, click on that option, and that'll bring you to a new screen. On the left side of that screen, you're gonna select vendor registration form, which is the second option on the bottom there. And that will help you um, expedite the process. You don't have to wait until you're accepted to register as a vendor with the city of Boston. You can register as soon as tomorrow, once again, to expedite the payment process in case you are selected. Once artists have completed the steps above, you can begin painting. All paint boxes have to be completed by October 1st. Artists will have to submit a photo of the completed box and a payment request form for the final $300. Page eight contains information on the application materials. We'll be looking for an artist statement, a few sentences that describe your artistic style, including the themes and materials that you explore in your work, the design description and approach. We want you to tell us about the concept behind your design and the process you will follow in order to ensure completion. An artist portfolio that contains up to 10 images of completed, completed past artwork that you feel is relevant to the project. And of course your design you can download the paint box template via our website or the application form and submit up to three designs. You must agree that the paint box can be painted over at any time by the city of Boston. And lastly, we'd like to know the preferred neighborhoods for your paint boxes location. And we'll try our best to assign you a box in that neighborhood and either of those preference, preferences, excuse me. Excuse me. On page nine, 
there's criteria that the review group that the working group will use to review and select finalists. Artists must live, work, or organize in Boston and be at least 18 years of age. All paint boxes must be completed by October 1st, so let's try to get them done during the summer, ideally. Designs must specifically connect to the preferred neighborhood in some way. Artists are responsible for ensuring the project's completion and photographing the paint box for documentation. Designs must discreetly incorporate the artist's signature and the text City of Boston. Artists may submit up to three designs for one utility box, but you will only be able to complete one utility box this year. And last but not least, your design should align with the City of Boston's curatorial vision, which you could read more about on page nine as well. We can't approve paint boxes for historic districts, and designs should cover the entire utility box, avoiding any large monochrome, monochrome areas. The city won't approve any designs that include logos or advertisements. The city will not approve any imagery that may be confused for directional signage, arrows, traffic signs. Except for the artist's signature, their website perhaps, and the city of Boston, the design should not incorporate text. And lastly, we believe that artists should be credited for their work. And so we may reject submissions that contain images of other, other artists' creative works without crediting them. The last two pages contain information about our program partners. On the left, you'll see information about the Boston Art Commission as well and information about our team and the mayor's office of arts and culture. And on the right, if you still have questions, there's information about this virtual Q&A, of course, but the deadline to submit written questions, which is tomorrow, May 13th, when we'll post the questions online next Wednesday, May 18th, um, and a form that you can use to submit questions as well that I've been responding to. Once again, please make sure to apply before 5 p.m. to avoid uh, crashing submittable. And next, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and walk you through the submittable application. So just give us a moment while we make that transition. All right, can you guys all see my screen? Thank you. I, was, I skipped ahead to the bottom here, but this is the application for Paintbox. We do contain, we include, excuse me, the basic information about the call, the budget, important dates and eligibility requirements up at the top for easy reference. The first part of the application asks for demographic information. I'll just scroll through these so you can see what we're asking for. We'd love to know which neighborhood you live, work, or organize in, how you found out about the opportunity, and more. Once you select or confirm your age, whether or not you're 18 years old, you'll be able to complete the second part of the application, continuing to answer demographic information, and then finally submitting your application materials. Here is where you'll type up an artist statement, but I forgot to mention, you don't need to necessarily write the artist statement. You can submit a two minute long video. If you decide, decide to submit a two minute long video to describe your artistic style and the materials and themes that you explore in your work, please write C audio slash video below in this section and then go ahead and upload your file below. Next, we'll want you to upload up to 10 images of past work. Um, there can also, uh, Mostly uh, audio, oh, sorry, excuse me, images preferably. Your paint box design is what comes next. You can upload up to three designs if you'd like. So feel free to do so. We'd love for you to describe your design and the approach that you'll take to ensure that it's completed. And the next section asks for information on, on where you live, work, or organize in Boston and the prefer preference for neighborhood uh, paint box location. 
Artists have the option to waive the $500 stipend and let us know if you might already have an existing vendor ID number. And then lastly, the terms and conditions that allow us to repaint the box if it is damaged. So I'm gonna stop sharing this website. We'll put the PowerPoint back up just to invite any questions. Once again, you can use the Q&A form on Zoom and we will get to them. Do we have any questions? If I've answered everything, I feel like I've accomplished something for the day, but please do not be shy. All right, I see a question in the chat. Do people typically complete the actual template form or do they submit separate larger examples? That's a good question. What I've seen so far, I have seen a couple of templates submitted, but I'd be interested to know if anyone else from the team has seen other approaches. I'll say that Amber, in my experience, I mean, I haven't overseen paint box before, but I've been involved as, as just a team member that people do submit the actual template form, um, you know, as, as their design, it seems the best approach in general to accurately represent what you'd be potentially painting, what the artist would be potentially painting. Thank you, Sarah. So I'd say use the template form if you can, but you don't have to, it's not a requirement. Thank you. I see another question in the Q&A form. How many applications do we usually receive every year? That's a really interesting question. Um, we've only done a couple of boxes every year, but last year we received the most applications ever. We received almost 500 applications and completed 83 utility boxes. Just to give you an idea of what last year's numbers look like. So we do expect the program to grow, hopefully. I'm gonna go over to this other question that came in via the chat. Does the vendor registration need to be completed prior to the application or is that only necessary upon selection? Might've missed it earlier if explained already. You can register as a vendor at any time. There are benefits to being a vendor with the city to have access to other opportunities. So you can do that today, tomorrow, um, whether or not you are selected, um, or you can wait until you get notified. I'm gonna toggle back to the Q&A form. Is email or by phone the preferred method of communication to inform artists about selection committee? I'd say yes, email is the preferred method of communication. Um, we might also send letters and um, if we can't reach you or do not hear back from you, we will follow up via phone. Um, please let us know if there are other modes of communication that might work better for you. The next question I see is how many boxes are available to paint in this 2022 year? That's a great question. We're looking for up to 100 artists to commission this summer. So it's a lot of boxes and a lot of new artists we're hoping to bring on board. Any other questions? Another question in the chat. If our past samples are in another medium, but same theme, can we submit them? Yes, yes, please submit them. Um, we'll wanna look at what your style is, what your approach, what your skill level is, um, and the subject matter perhaps of your works will help us make a decision. So if you did create in a different medium, we're happy to look um, and see if it'll help us make our decision. And at any point, Christina, Sarah, if you guys have anything to add, feel free to jump in. Can this 
open new opportunities in the art industry? Hmm, that's an interesting question. Can you explain more about what you mean by that? And in the meantime, I welcome more questions. You know, Amber, I think I, I'm going to guess <laughs> what that um yeah. that questioner means, and I think if you're asking if this can open new opportunities for artists, uh, we hope so. That's one of the project goals, as Amber mentioned um, at the beginning of the meeting, that one of the goals of this pro this program is to give artists some experience um, in public art and implementing an artwork in the public realm building portfolios um, so that potentially people could start applying for other projects and grow their practice. Um, so this is, you know, an opportunity that hopefully artists find, um, gives them some professional experience that they can then use uh, to further their career. And I don't know if that's what the questioner meant, we'll see, but. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking a stab at that, Sarah. The next question we got is, are there any particular requirements regarding sealing, weatherproofing the boxes? Do you recommend a certain type of clear coat the city would like us to use? This is a great question. And for this, I'm gonna reference um, what we've done in the past. Give me one second to just get my resources. All right, so we do provide a few recommendations uh, for sealants. Um, excuse me, let me just see what they did. Oh, you know what? This information will be included in your award letter, but just for a reference, give me one second. So a protective varnish and coating of wax is the first option. You can apply the varnish after the paint has dried and on a clear windless day, otherwise dirt particles will stick to the varnish when it's wet. Once the varnish is fully dried, you can apply butcher's wax and buff to clear uh, to a clear finish. That's one option. The second option is enamel paints and car wax. And the third option is anti-graffiti coating. So those are three options. Of course, um, we'll provide more information about that in the award letter. Let me know if that was helpful for you, if I can explain further. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. Okay, I'm glad that helped. <laughs> Give it another minute in case anyone has any more questions about paint box. If you're in college and your residence is Boston and you meet all of the other requirements and criteria for paint box, then please, please apply as long as you're over the age of 18. <laughs> Sorry to the college freshmen. <laughs> if anyone's not 18, which you should be. So, <laughs> Any last questions before you wrap up? We're wrapping up a little bit early, so I don't mind hanging back in case more questions come to you. We got a question, and actually this is a frequently asked question. Thank you so much for asking this. Can we involve younger people in a collaborative way? For example, neighborhood kids. We get this question all of the time. And unfortunately this year, we are not allowing youth to participate in paint box, but we are strongly considering it for the future. So please stay tuned for more information about that. 
uh, we got a comment about an artist that lives in Boston, but attends school in Beverly. So not sure if it would clash with the program. That's an interesting point. I would think that if, you're, if your residence is in Boston, that that's what qualifies you. Sarah, Christina, let me know if you have other advice, but that's what I would say. I agree, Amber. Christina? Yeah, I was gonna say, because we don't specifically have a residency requirement, as long as you have some connection to Boston, whether that's, you know, you grew up there or you spend a lot of time there now and create artwork there, I think that would be fine. Yeah, and you'll have an opportunity to explain your connection to Boston, and that'll help us as well. So no worries. Any other questions? No problem. Any final questions before we wrap up? So once again, after this session, you'll be able to access the answers uh, that we discussed today under the Frequently Asked Questions section of our website. And you can still submit questions via the Google form up until tomorrow. So please do not hesitate. If nothing's coming to you immediately, you can also email me at amber.torres at boston.gov. Thank you so much. So I'll give it one more minute and then we'll we'll wrap this up. Any last questions? Thank you guys for attending. All right. Well, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and conclude this session. Thank you so much for attending, everybody. Goodbye.